when you read that scripture, you begin to ask yourself, what is Jesus talking about? But he was very direct. He explains it. I would say that when you want to know what the Lord is saying in any scripture, just look at the end of the scripture. Or if you don't find it at the end, look at the beginning. You will see what he was communicating. John 12, 24. <clears throat> Somebody says, speak louder. I hear you. All right. Um, let me make this clear. A single grain of wheat would never be more than a single grain of wheat unless it drops to the ground and dies. Remember, I didn't say they pushed it. The grain itself dropped to the ground and dies. I'm reading the Passion Translation. Because then it sprouts and produces a great harvest of wheat, all because one grain died. 25. The person who loves his life and pampers himself will miss true life. But the one who detaches his life from this world and abandon himself to me, abandons, abandons himself to me, will find true life and enjoy it forever. Let's look at King James, the king himself. Verily, verily, I say to you, except a corn of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. We are in a season of resurrection. And the question I want us to ask ourselves is, am I a candidate for resurrection? We definitely saw that you can be a candidate in some areas, but other areas of your life, you may be praying and say, Lord, permit me die here. <laughs> Lord, I'm still alive in this area. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Any child and every child of God who is not walking on something for the Holy Ghost, you arrive and you are really not a child. <laughs> Due to the plans, so don't lose your childishness before the Lord. Means always don't lose your childlikeness before the Lord. Never get to a point in life where you are not a child anymore. Nobody can teach you, nobody can talk to you. Never lose that. When you read the, the scripture that we read, for it to make a lot of sense or give more faith, you want to I read Colossians, Colossians chapter 3. When Jesus said you have to lose your life on this earth in order for you to enjoy the life that is truly life. What is he talking about? Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If you then were raised with Christ, desire, what are your desires? What do you crave for? What do you really want to have? Somebody say a house. That's right. But look at what he said we should crave for. Desire those things which are above. Desire those things which are above. Look at verse, uh, verse 2. It says set. I like the word. Underline the word desire in your Bible. And then go to chapter 3, again, still chapter 3, verse 2, go to chapter 3, it says, set, like you set a thermostat in your house. Set your affection on things above, not on things on earth. Now somebody's wondering, is he talking about house? I shouldn't want a house. No, look at it. Keep reading. Verse 5. He said, put to death. Now he's talking about the things you shouldn't set your affection on. He said, put to death your earthly nature, sexual immorality, uncleanliness, evil desires, covetousness, 
which is idolatry. Every time you see something that don't belong to you, you want to take it. You can think you just like good things. No, the Bible says it's called covetousness. It's, it, it, the Bible says covetousness is idolatry. You worship and value things more than God. You see, because of these things, the wrath of God comes on the sons of disobedience. There's so much more to show. I just want to go to this point straight. Verse 8. But now you must also put away these things. When the Bible talks about the world, talks about worldly things, these are, these are the things it's talking about. It's not talking about your house and your car. Your house and your car, the things you desire, especially if you're desiring them in the flesh, they are not really the problem. They have a root, and these are the root. Verse 8. You must also put away these things. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you've put off the old nature, which is dead, with its deed, sorry, and embrace the new nature which is being renewed in knowledge. Your new nature is being renewed in knowledge. What is the nature that the Father is talking about? You must die to anger. Situations come up and you're like, ah, it feels like you're going to be so angry and mad. Somebody said something and you're like, yeah, catch yourself. You're dead to anger. Everybody type it in. Say dead to anger. How are you going to be dead to anger? By renewing your mind. You say embrace the new nature. We're going to look at the new nature really quick. When you die to these other things, you're going to resurrect to something else. And that's what we're looking at. When daddy says a season of resurrection, what is he talking about? Dropping some old attitudes and characters and picking up new ones. Mm. There's no like our God. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Filthy, filthy. Same things that don't bless people. Each, every one of us is guilty. Of. Don't even try to cover it. It's, a, it's, a, it's the afternoon to repent and run faster. He said, drop it. Drop them. Put them away. Don't pick anger as the only way to react. Don't pick anger as the only solution to, to if I don't get angry, this child will not understand. And I'm preparing for the for the for the um thank you, Lord Jesus. The fasting. And one of the scriptures that we see is the prodigal son, a God. Let the scripture not pierce you like it did to me. No, it's good for the scriptures to pierce you like it did to me. A bad son think of everything that belongs to me. The father did not fight. The father was not angry. The father didn't say, you don't know me in this city. I'm the richest man. Do you mean people will be talking about me and telling everyone else? Now, this is not the part for the retreat so I can share with us now. Don't you know my reputation? Even when he came back, his father didn't even talk about reputation. God, flesh must die. Flesh must die. Build house of flesh must die. Who told you that this is your um, ang anger as the best way to respond to situation is helping anything? <laughs> it's not helping. Anger is not the way out. Wrath is not the way out. Blasphemy, start saying things you don't even believe in. It's not the way out. Using your mouth wrong is not the way out. Look at what we need to do. Verse 12. Embrace. I like the verbs that they are using here. Embrace. Look at verse 10. Let's look at verse 10 before 12. Embrace the new nature, which is renewed in knowledge. Or you can say by knowledge or as you learn. 
this afternoon we're learning to drop some things renew your mind the bible is clear i might not be able to pull that first but it says the anchor our human anchor our human approach to things don't bring righteousness don't bring results somebody can go to that scripture and pull it up human anger should be james human anger does not bring about results you're so angry that if they put kokoyam on your anger it will boil it's not helping i guess that is talking to me all by myself you should not have brought this message to everyone it doesn't look like it's for anyone He said, embrace the new nature. Embrace it. Hold on to it tight. You're being renewed through knowledge. Verse 12. He comes to verse 12. I use the word again. He said, embrace as elect of God, holy and beloved. The spirit of mercy. Ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> instead of being angry and cursing, he said, no matter what happens, show mercy. Show mercy. Thank you, Minister. Bye. Good job. Just gain five mommy points, mama's points. Remind me, we'll redeem them. I hope you're keeping these points, though. I've said it before that all mama points are redeemable in December. If mama says you have five mama points, you don't save them. <laughs> but you prove the date and say what you said to gain your points. So don't come and say you have mama points when you didn't have any. <laughs> yes, I'll make sure every December there's a forum to the redeem all your mama points. He said, embrace mercy. Means hold on to mercy. Hold on to kindness. Did somebody see kindness again? We're reading Colossians. Sister Colette, sweetheart, welcome. Colossians 3. Up right here, he said what? Set your affection. He said desire. Desire. And then verse 5, he said, put to death. Means you're the one doing it. Put to death, put to death some things on cleanliness, immorality. It's not only sex, put the whole immorality away, not just sexual. What's your moral? Are you obedient? Do you do things your way, my way or the highway? Morality, inordinate, ordinate affections, evil desires. Covetousness, idolatry. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. It's not my way, nothing works. But then see what to embrace mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind. You know why? If you, these are directly opposite to the other ones. Humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Ouch, ouch, long suffering. It means you give people plenty of opportunities. He said, Bear with one another, verse 13, and forgive one another. If any has a quarrel against one another, even as Christ forgave you, you must do. It means you must forgive. And above all this, embrace love, which is the bond of perfection. Let the peace of God, to which also you are called in the one body, rule in your heart. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ do it richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatever you do in your words or in deed, do it in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God. You can tell it's sweet, right? I'm just really excess. Let's focus. I am a good talent by Yakata. I need to close my Bible. What is that he's saying? It's a season of resurrection. Resurrection means a green field and die. 
That's the only reason why there is resurrection. Now you're saying it's a season of resurrection. I know you already identified the areas of resurrection in the morning. The follow-up now is, what are your grounds for resurrection? Did you die in that area? If you did not die, we're about to pray. Lord, help me to die in that area. If you say, my, my finances are going to resurrect, the first question you want to ask yourself is, financially, are you dead? That he has control over your money, not control. Does, is, he, is he Lord over your money? Is he the owner over your resources? Oh, my help must come back to life. Does he talk to you about what to eat and you listen? One of the reasons my ligaments have challenges, the Holy Spirit told me this morning, he said, I've been telling you to tell your trainer not to hurt your knee. But you and your trainer do whatever you want in the gym. Out of grace. Out of grace. Can my knees be trained? Yes. But there are things we shouldn't be doing because we know. Worst of all, I've been saying it with my own mouth. My knee, my knee, my knee, my knee, my knee. Then so in the seeds, right? Don't think it's only the good ones that will come out of you. <laughs> Somebody said, my seed. I heard that. But this is the truth. During resurrection period, is the seed that you sow that will come up. That's why you cry for mercy. You don't only show mercy because mercy is cheap. You sow mercy because it's a seed. Ouch! Mercy is a seed. You see, die to some things. What are the things you want to consciously begin to die to so you can resurrect to these good things? You want to die to your own ways. You see, unless you fall, it's a deliberate act. We heard the other day, we're free moral agents. We make our own decisions. Unfortunately, the, the consequences don't only come to us. They come to our children. They come to people around us. How free is a free moral agent? That's a question. It says, set your affection on things above. There is no anchor that will lead to hurting another person in heaven. There are no malice in heaven. Set your things above. Where Christ is, before you say he's talking above, above whatever you're thinking above is beside Jesus and where he's sitting. He said, in Christ, where Christ is. He said, put to death, means you're the one. Anger, anger. Oh, no, 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 no. My choice in this situation is no anger. Mm, I, I escape. You know, one of the things that I will show you this morning, he said, you have forgotten how to let me fight for you. I say, ouch. And I understood exactly what he was saying. When people hurt you, when people maltreat you, do you know why you're angry? Because you don't remember or you have forgotten that there's somebody that can fight that battle better for you. That's why you get angry. That's why you try to fight it. If you just remember that you are the apple of his eye, did I say you? If we just remember that we are the apple of his eyes, we will forgive like immediately. When people hurt us, the first thing will not be revenge, judge, oh God. The first thing will be have mercy. Lord, how can I show this person kindness? Don't forget verse 12. If verse 12 is the only thing, you take verse, verse um, 9, 10, 11, and 12. If these are the only thing you take from this exhortation this afternoon, it will change your life. Choose mercy. Choose mercy. Choose kindness. Choose to be humble in your mind. Humbleness of mind. Choose to be meek. Choose to suffer long. Suffer long don't mean you're in an abusive a relationship and you allow the person to abuse you. No. So far alone just means I will wait until daddy has thank you for me. I will wait until he shows me what to do. My God, that thing is not sweet on the flesh. This long suffering is not. You have somebody that constantly gets, as we will say to you, on your nerves. I'm not sure why you let them get them in, get there anyway. But they constantly get on it. And if 
first option and in your understanding, the only option is to tell them to stop. And you check with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, uh-uh. We handle that person. It's one week. It's two weeks. It's three weeks. It's a month. You're like, what? Father, did you remember? He said, I do. Father, it hurts. I know. Daddy, what do I do? I will take care of it. That's long suffering. It's not. It's not somebody. You, you made an abusive relationship, and you stay there and say God will do something. I mean, in case uh, cases where you can also pray, and the Lord will say, "Hold on, I'll take care of it." If it's abusive, if it says that, then that's different. Say, bear with one another and forgive one another. That's a resurrection life. Where instead of saying, it's me, the way I did it, they, they hurt me, 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 me. Just listen, me, me. I was a catch yourself. Every time you keep saying me, 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 I, I thought, I felt, you're in the flesh. 80% of the time, you'll be in the flesh. They didn't think about me. They didn't talk to me. My husband did not give me a good night kiss. Give him a good night kiss. Just give him a good night kiss and that solves the problem. He never comes to embrace me. But when it's time for food, he comes and asks for food. Give him the food. Unless you choose to die to these things, you will not resurrect to these other ones. Unless you choose to die, put to death, your unclean talking, immoral, sexual immorality, immoral living. I live the way I want. Covetousness. Oh, I like that bag. I'm a, I must have it. No, Lord, do I need another handbag? No, I, I have the money now. Don't you know? There's money. I walk home so I can spend this thing the way I want. I walk. It's not my covetousness. Just because you saw somebody have it. Anger, malice, blasphemy. He said, until you choose and say, as far as I'm concerned, I'm dead to this, you won't be able to enjoy meekness. You won't be able to enjoy this humbleness. You will not. That's a new life. That's a resurrected life. As we close, ask yourself, am I living? the resurrected life? Am I living a life of resurrection? Am I a meek person? Am I a kind person? Can somebody say, ah, that woman is kind. That man is kind. That person is humble in heart. No matter how much they know, they still humble themselves. They still love people. They still interact with people. He said, let the peace of God to which you are called. Did you see that, 15? You're called to peace. How can you be angry, blasphemous, speak anyhow, and then be at peace? It's not possible. He said, you're called to peace. Let peace roll in your body. And then be what? Thankful. That's the resurrected life. Thankfulness. Regardless of what's echoed, no matter what the enemy throws at you, Lord, I thank you. Father, you're so good to me. I like the song by Pastor Paul Major. No temptation. No temptation. It's a scripture. First Corinthians, or is it Romans 10 13? No, it should be First Corinthians 10 13. He said, Whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord. Do it for daddy. Do it because daddy said so. Do it the way daddy would do. I'm telling you, that conference we had in my office, the first big conference, that thing humbled me to the core. I saw how when Jesus came into the meeting, Father himself worshipped. I said, God, this is your son. He said, he's the king, Emma. I said, huh? He said, he's the king. Don't you like the king? I said, do, but it's surprising how you worship him. He said, You worship the king. That's what you do. Why are three of them walking 
and interchanging and, and enjoying the Godhead. No frictions. There's a bond of peace. They're joyful, kind. I'm telling you, there's one thing you enjoy the most when you know Father God is joy. And I know that in heaven there will be plenty of joy. What are we saying? When the season of the resurrected life, we talk, we pray in the morning about areas we want resurrection. This afternoon, I want you to begin to ask yourself, what aspect of my character must die? And what needs to resurrect? It's intentional. Remember, John chapter 12, verse 24 says, he falls to the ground and dies. <laughs> Not somebody pushed it and then he fell. Not because your spiritual parents say, oh, this aspect of your character needs help. Mm -mm. Examine your own self. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. If you are still in the faith, ah, can your children say, this is our mother. <laughs> because of what I see you do, I will go to heaven too. Can people say that? This is not the condemnation kind. No, this is the examination. Please, don't take it to that area. All of us, check yourself. What are some of the things? 80% I have mastered anger, but there are times, especially when I've not studied. Oh God, don't even come around. Examine yourself. Examine your own self. Thank you, Mr. Bright. Second Corinthians 13. Five and six. Examine your own self. From time to time, I do this thing called recall. I take a personal retreat and I say, Lord, check me out. Show me what I'm doing stupid. What is it that we need to drop in the Bill family? What am I doing that I ought not to be doing with my life? Your life is an investment from God. Go to Him from time to time and say, Lord, am I using this puff of air right? Am I doing the things I ought to be doing with this puff of air you've put inside of me? It's not your air. We sing in the song, it's your bread in my lungs. I give you the praise. Ask yourself, are you using this investment of the air he has put in your lungs for him? Or well, now you have his capital, you can do whatever you want with his capital. I'm going to unmute us and we will pray. There's no prayer point. Pray the way you, you feel it. <laughs> All of us are feeling it. What are those areas? Lord, help me again with my mouth. Help me again and again with anger. Help me again and again with covetousness. I just like stuff. I like this. I like that. To the point where I can't even spend time with you. Because I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. If I don't have this, I can't do anything. I want this. I want that. It's very important. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this word. Lord, this is my season of resurrection.